Thank you so much for coming to The Messenger. Once again, I am The Messenger, and I am just here to give you wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation on whatever you are facing today. So I wanted to make this video for people who are in a church, and you're being blocked, you're being hindered, you're being sabotaged, um... They just will not let you minister and you know you've been called to preach and you've been at this church for a long time and they just will not release you. You know, many are called, few are chosen. Okay? And if you know with a shadow of a doubt you've been called, you've been dreaming it, you've been told, you've been told so many times that you're supposed to minister and you know you are anointed and you're sitting in a church where they will not let you minister, it is still your responsibility. It is still your responsibility to minister and do what you're called to do. I think we've been sabotaged um about this because a lot of people have not done what they were told and called to do because of this and i'm going to give you some stories and some things that i went through to wake me up from that because i was in a church like that to where i know i was called and chosen and i had so i had people in the church <laughs> that blocked me and hindered me and wouldn't include me, made sure I uh, felt left out, you know. Um, and even if they did let me in, it was just constantly like bullying and picked on and things to where I couldn't do what I supposed to do. And I believe that's where we all mess up. That shouldn't be happening first of all in the first place but that's still not an excuse not to do what you are called to do and i remember being done like that and i remember the holy spirit told me to sit outside my apartment and he would send women to me and i would minister them they would just come up like i always get to people to this day just strangers walk up to me and telling me um all their business to this day they they just open up and tell me everything so the holy spirit had me to sit outside my apartment and that's where i started my ministry and i didn't tell anyone i didn't tell anyone in the church that i was doing this i did it because there was so much blockage you know i was a single beautiful woman and my pastor at the time was single and a handsome guy and you know once I just know they did that with any beautiful woman coming in. They did not want anybody marrying him. And so that was the reason why I was being done like that. Because they didn't want me to be the first lady. Which was cool. And I still stayed there because the teaching was so good that I didn't want to leave. And I, I just didn't let that bother me. I didn't come here for a man. I came here to hear the word of God. And I stayed there for seven years, grounded and rooted. And whatever they dished out, I just used the word of God to go through every challenge. And then God released me to go among the earth. Okay? You're still without excuse. You have, it's, it's no excuse right now because we have social media. We have social media and you can create a page and you can get started do not stay stagnant if they don't release you don't worry about it create a page this is for you let the ears that have ears hear me if you've never listened to me before hear me you are still res held responsible for what we are to do in the earth because if when we go to meet jesus and god the first thing he's going to ask us is, what did you do in the earth? And you cannot say, well, my pastor didn't release me. He wouldn't let me minister. People were lying on me. You still got to do what you were created to do. And I'm telling you this from experience. Um, and I didn't catch it. So that's what this page is for. For 
I talk about things that nobody talk about. You, I'll get the house. I'll get the husband. I'll get all that. But you got to work your salvation. You got things to do here on the earth. This is probably why you haven't received what you're supposed to see, receive. You take care of God's business. He going to take care of yours. The house is already yours. The husband is already yours. The car is already yours. Whatever your heart's desire is already yours. You got things to do. And a lot of us miss it because we want God to do stuff and we're sitting around doing nothing. That's just like when we tell our children to clean our rooms and now they want to go to the movies. Well, no, you didn't do anything that I said. I told you months ago to clean your room. Your room is still dirty. Your room is still... This is how God operates. So you cannot receive anything until you take care of business. And if those who are receiving and they're not doing what God uh, said do, they're sneaking through the window. They're, they're finding a way to get it. They're getting credit cards to buy things. They're, and they're ending up in debt and they're ending up losing it because they still didn't do it God's way. You want things now and you haven't done what God told you to do. This is the missing piece to people's puzzle. We want what we want, but we won't do nothing. We won't work our salvation. We won't bless nobody. We won't help nobody. We won't do what we're supposed to do. Take care of God's business and he's going to take care of yours. Start a page today. If that is what you're supposed to do, you've dreamed about it, God has showed you vision, you know in your heart, you know that people walk up to you ministering and talking to you and telling you this, and you still haven't moved, this is why things are not moving in your life. You haven't been obedient. When we go to heaven, that's the first thing God is going to ask us. And if you, you can do whatever you want to do, but when you tell him what, you, and you telling him what you've been doing, and it doesn't line up with what you were created to do. He's going to send you away from him. And going to call you evil. And then he takes your gifts and give to other people that will do something with it. Send the Bible. Glory to your name, Father. I hope I'm helping somebody. Get up and start your ministry. I did it on here. And when you do it, when I did this page, um, I I told, I say I told, I told a cousin, which she's following me. I don't know if she still is, but um, she followed me, and I think I told, and and everything was successful. My cousin didn't do anything, but what you can't tell people that's been sabotaging you what you're doing. I told, I think I told three other people and the other young lady I told, I don't know if she's still on here, but I stopped going to, uh, going there, but I told two other ministries about my page and, and, and I, I felt led to tell them, but I guess God was teaching me a lesson. When you start your ministry, don't tell them, just do what you are supposed to do because it's not for approval. I told this ministry about my page to support me because, I, you know, I, I felt that God sent me to this church and to support me. And they never supported my page. They never went to look at it. They never supported me. I never seen no one join. Um, nobody talked about it. I, I, you know, that's the last thing they was hearing about. But when I stopped going and I called the, men, I called the pastor and let him know why I went quit going because it was just too much going on and as soon as i did that that's when they started joining my page that's when i started getting all the harassment that's when i started <laughs> i mean people were saying all kind of stuff on my page my page had over four or five thousand people on there and i never had any issues until i invited these people Okay, so don't tell nobody. I'm giving you, I'm telling you why. Because people rise up, they jealous, they envious, and this is people that know you that will start saying all kinds. You you don't know people's heart until you reject them. These people went all on my page and were saying all kind of hateful stuff. And you'll see on my page, if you go back to my old video, you'll see where I'm talking about it. Because my page that was not going on until I told people. 
Then I went and told uh, one more person, and after that, I just stopped. I told another leader that, you know, because I felt led. And after he saw my page, after I had a conversation with him, the next time I went to the church to visit, the the whole uh, sermon was about me and our conversation, talked about me really bad. And they seen how big of a following I had. I think I had like 6,000 at the time. They seen how I had a big following. The next time I saw that person, very rude, nasty to me, uh, kind of rejected me, just pushed me along, didn't even want to conversate with me no more. And you, you don't tell nobody. That's what I'm telling you. You don't let them know. You go in church, you leave it alone, you go in there and hear the word of God, and you just keep going and let them keep on treating you like you are nothing. And you go and do what you're supposed to do. You must be powerful when some people make sermons about you. You're powerful. Um, so don't tell anybody. Just go do what you're supposed to do. Those are my lessons. Lesson learned. I don't even tell anybody anymore. Because I got bullied so bad and harassed. And then I got talked about in the church. Through the pulpit. The first lady and the pastor. So you know you're powerful when you make people do that. So when you do your ministry. Because you've been blocked everywhere. And you know you've been called. Go to social, make a platform. Social media. And just do what you're supposed to do. We are still held accountable. We can no longer let people, you're waiting, that's out of order. We are not supposed to sit back and wait for a pastor to release us to do what we're supposed to do. If you're being blocked, go do what you're supposed to do. You are held accountable. Everybody who goes into the presence of God are going to be asked, what did you do? You need to work your salvation. Do what you're supposed to be doing and keep going. Keep it to yourself and keep going. All these followers on here is what God sent. And hopefully those people <laughs> are off my page by now. I'm pretty sure they're still watching. But if you are, I want you to know that I love you. I forgive you. I have no problem. I wish the best for you. May God bless you a hundredfold blessing for sticking around. Hopefully, I said something that blessed you. God bless you. I love each and every one of you, and I wish the best for you. May God continue to strengthen you in every way, every area of your life. God bless you. You have to do what you work your salvation. Stop looking for God to constantly give, 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 and you do nothing. Start your ministry. I don't care if it's just telling, like, like my page, I started off just telling about myself because I remember my pastor said, You never let people get close to you because. People get close to you to find out things about you. They don't get to get close to you for real reasons. So that was why I started. You know, and I started telling them about myself, what I experienced, what I went through, because you never know what you're going through to help somebody else. Somebody could be going through something and they're silent about it. How many people you know in relationships and they're in abusive relationships and nobody knows? So if I get out what I learned and what I went through, I could help somebody else. It's not about me. So we are not supposed to sit here and wait for a man to tell us, oh, now you can minister. Oh, I'll give you a position in the church. If you feel led, and if you got a position in the church, glory to God, hallelujah. That's not what I'm saying. Pay attention. I'm saying these are for people who know you've been called. You've been called to sing, and you try to go in the choir, and it's a click in the church. That's what I'm talking about. There's a click in the church, 